Well, the current Maharashtra Chief Minister Eknath Shinde will continue to be the Chief Minister for now. Well, Udhav Thakre has today lost a very important battle in the Supreme Court of India. The Constitution Bench of the Supreme Court of India, headed by Chief Justice of India D.Y. Chandrasekhar, delivered its judgment in the Maharashtra political crisis case today, ending the lengthy legal battle between Eknath Shinde led Shiv Sena and the former Chief Minister Udhav Thakre led Shiv Sena factions. The Supreme Court today has importantly held that the former Governor of Maharashtra, Bhagat Singh Koshiari, did not have enough objective material before him to call for a floor test by Udhav Thakre faction before the Maharashtra Legislative Assembly. So here we are dividing the Maharashtra political crisis judgment into these specific pointers. Firstly, the governor cannot enter into a political arena. Disagreement and differences between a party or a political party has to be resolved as per the party constitution and the governor cannot seem to enter or get into the thicket of intra or inter-party affairs or, or should not be seen to be acting in a partisan manner. Well, the judgment notes uh, that Governor Bhagat Singh Koshiari had material before him such as some of the parties not um, have or some of the party members having differences with uh, the then Chief Minister Odhav uh, Thakre. However, the Supreme Court has today ruled that such kind of differences um, can at the best be discontent or dissatisfaction of some of the members with some policy decisions of the Shiv Sena government and cannot be called or form the basis of calling uh, the Chief Minister to prove his majority in the floor of the House. Secondly, Governor was wrong to conclude that Udhav Thakre had lost majority. The Supreme Court judgment has today noted that nothing before the governor actually showed that the party members had indeed withdrawn support from the then uh, Udhav Thakre-led Shiv Sena government and thus squarely the blame falls on the governor to not have used an objective criteria to judge this entire situation and in fact used a subjective criteria to determine whether or not the party members had withdrawn support. In all in all, uh, the Supreme Court of India has today stated that the governor's action of ordering the floor test was illegal. The court has today also held that Eknath Shinde cannot be unseated as the Maharashtra Chief Minister since the former Chief Minister Udhav Thakre had resigned voluntarily. In one of the most important points of the judgment, uh, um, you know, authored by the Chief Justice of India, D.Y. Chandrachur, it is noted that a voluntary resignation cannot be taken back by the Supreme Court of India. And that is why status quo ante cannot be restored. The judgment notes that had Mr. Thakre not resigned um, uh, uh, at the end of June and faced the floor test, and even if it, he had lost the floor test, status quo ante could have been restored. But in this case, it cannot be done so. Does today held that the governor's action of calling the Eknath Shinde faction of the Swift Sena to form government with Bharatiya Janata Party was indeed correct, even though the action of the governor to ask Udhav Thakre to face the flow test was illegal. The Court of India has today struck a difference between what is a legislature party and what is a political party. The court has today ruled that a whip is appointed by the political party and not the legislature party. In an important ruling, the Supreme Court of India has concluded that uh, the appointment of Bharat Sheth Gogavle as the whip after Sunil Prabhu last year was illegal. Supreme Court of India has today also held that the Nabam Revia judgment, which was at the center of controversy in this entire case, will now be referred to a larger bench. You may ask why. The question is whether the temporary disablement of the speaker can be misused by the MLAs or not really the moot question before the larger bench. Here, whether a speaker can decide a disqualification petition against a member if he faces, if he himself faces a notice for removal is the moot question before the larger bench and the Supreme Court has agreed to refer the Nabam Rabia judgment to a larger bench reconsideration. The Supreme Court has today also held that the Speaker of a Legislative Assembly can decide on the disqualification petitions along with the Election Commission of India, which is hearing cases of which 
or who is the real uh, political party. Here, uh, the Supreme Court has importantly uh, said that the Speaker does not have to wait for a decision from the Election Commission of India because if the Speaker waits for a decision and the Election Commission of India comes to a conclusion of who is the political party, then that particular decision of the Election Commission of India will become retrospective and that such a decision cannot be retrospective and thus these two bodies have to operate and decide simultaneously. The Supreme Court today has also ruled that a split in a political party is no longer a defence for an M MLA or an MP facing disqualification proceedings. The Speaker would prima facie determine who the political party is for the purpose of adjudicating disqualification petitions under paragraph 2 clause 1 of the 10th schedule where two or more factions claim to be that political party. The Supreme Court has today also held that it cannot decide disqualification proceedings as the court of first instance since the power lies with the Speaker. The Supreme Court has also held that the MLAs and MPs facing disqualification proceedings can indeed participate in the proceedings of the House. That was all. That was a wrap-up of the Maharashtra political crisis case. This is Devayan Roy for BarnBench.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon.